Soul shot, baby. Good day, everyone. We're here for another episode of the DVD show. So for today, around 24 hours ago, we have one of the newest draftees of the Rain or Shine Elasto Painters and a former Ateneo Blue Eagle and also a former Zamboanga player from the Maharlika Filipinas League. We have Anton Asiscio. Uh, thank you for coming on to the show, Anton. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, congrats also on being drafted yesterday. Um, it was really a great draft and Rain or Shine stacked up on like three guards in the first two rounds. Yeah, yeah. I feel blessed na they actually picked me. I kind of wanted them to pick me talaga. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really good because when I was talking with Gabe last week or two weeks ago, he mentioned that it was really tough for them because they didn't have a pure point guard during the bubble. And it was kind of evident. Like when the, when the games got tough, it was tough for them to... Uh, stabilize the offense. So now they got like three guards. Hopefully, it, causes, it doesn't cause more problems for them at that position. So, kamusta naman yung first day mo? Like, did you practice with them the haga today or wala pa? Hindi pa. Tomorrow pa. Tomorrow pa, actually. Pero nakausap mo na ba yung teammates mo or yung coaches? Uh, well, si Coach Chris Gavina messaged me right after the draft. Tapos... Siyempre, may message ko rin si my former Ateneo teammate, si Vince, tsaka si Adrian. So, yeah. I'm looking for, forward to that reunion. <laughs> so, yung draft day stories ba? Meron ka bang share Like, normally kasi pag, pag face-to-face, merong mga like stories na nangyayari behind the scenes. Pero sa'yo, since virtual lang yung draft, wala kayo dun sa, ano, sa lugar na kung saan ginawa yung draft. Meron ka bang stories or like yung how your day went? Kinakabahan ka ba sobra? Yeah, actually, I uh, super nervous um, the entire time. Uh, I didn't actually didn't expect it, yeah, because yeah, it's just through Zoom, de ba? So, but to my surprise, I was I was in the room because I'm just alone. Ah, okay. I was shaking. <laughs> I was shaking. Kinakabahan talaga ako. Uh oh. So, but yeah, at least you know, it all went to according to plan, naman, how I wanted it. <laughs> Nung going into the draft, ba? Ano ba yung expectations mo sa sarili mo? Or wala ka masyadong expectations pero basta madraft ka? Yeah, wala naman na expectations. I just uh, gusto ko lang na whatever team would draft me, you know, they would get the best out of me. Na magtatrabaho talaga ako, do my best to contribute to the team and you know, work my hardest to reach my maximum potential. Yun lang naman. How about for Rain or Shine as a team? Like in the bubble, they didn't really play well. They were like the eighth seed, even if they started out well. And in the quarterfinals, it was still a close match against Tenebra, and it was like a breaks of the game towards the end. So based from your assessment from the outside looking in, ano yung contribute mo kagad na instantly sa team? Um, I think one thing is yung stability ko nga. You know, I'm a very composed player. I don't really force a lot of things and uh, came from a good system also. I learned from a lot of great coaches in Coach Tab Baldwin, Coach John Uchiko and Coach Eric Altamirano. So hopefully, you know, ma-contribute ko yung mga natutunan ko sa kanila dun sa team. How about from the weaknesses of the team? Like, for example, yung lack of three-point shooting. I know you're a very efficient and prolific shooter and also yung pagiging lack of floor general kasi nga nung bubble, parang Ray ng Batak was playing the one, even if it's not his natural position, because they didn't really have a natural one, and Chris Rosales was recently released by the team, or he wasn't re-signed, so I feel you guys have a big hole, big hole to fill there, so what's your thoughts on that? Uh, for me, it's just, you know, a great opportunity, actually, ako, I'm also not a natural point guard, but, and I knew that coming into the draft, so one of the main things that I was working on was really, you know, trying to be an all-around player, not just a shooter, you know, be involving my teammates, being more of a playmaker, you know, getting everyone's set up dun sa offense and being an extension of the head coach dun sa floor. 
how about naman sa veterans of your team like Gabe Norwood, Bo Belga, and James Yap. They're like three of the most popular players in the league. So uh, what do you think naman of them? Were they your idols growing up or are there certain aspects of their game that you really want to emulate or put into your own game also? Uh, well, I'm looking forward to learning a lot from them. Nga, I've been watching those guys since I was a kid, actually, and you know, I, I really look up to them. So I'm just really excited to share the floor with them and you know, just try to be a sponge and try to you know, just pick their brains and absorb whatever they, the wisdom that they try to impart to me. About ready ka na ba sa ano screeny bow? Parang lahat natatakot din <laughs> sa bug. I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm I'm glad actually na he's my teammate. Pero that means I'm going to have to be getting through those screens every day in practice. <laughs> oh, sana yan lang yun para pag sa game, pag yung ibang bigs na sanay na yung katawan. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So for the for, for the next part, I wanted to talk about your upbringing and how you grew up in your fam- with your family and I've read that you were really an Ateneo player ever since grade school to high school and to college so we, I, since not a lot of people focus on like the upbringing and the growing up of an individual or an athlete it's good that we also touch on it so first of all I just wanted to ask like what was your first activity or sport or was it arts or theater or something growing up? Ano yung mga activities mo nung bata ka pa? Like mga grade 1, 2, 3, mga ganun. Actually, as a kid, ang, ang first sport ko talaga basketball. As in, my parents would tell me na when I was a kid, I didn't even play with my toys that much. Like I'd play with them for a bit, but at the end of the day, I'd still end up dribbling and shooting a basketball. So... I feel like this is really, you know, what, what was meant for me. How about yung golf? I heard in an article, I read in an article that your family plays golf or they were really passionate with golf. Yeah. Did you ever consider playing that? Actually, ngayon lang, uh, medyo, nung start lang ng quarantine, medyo nahiligan ko mag golf. And I've uh, been taking a few lessons and been going to the driving range. And yun nga, I actually come from a family of golfers talaga sila Ton Asistio and yung brother ng dad ko talagang golf yung sport talaga niya. So, you know, every now and then I, I ask him if he can teach me a few things and so far, gumagana naman. <laughs> oh, tsaka yung golf ngayon parang sumikat siya nung pandemic kasi it's a sport that that's not a real contact sport and you can do it like sa Alabang Country Club or something. It's, it's really something you can do even now. Yeah, actually, golf and tennis nga yung palay kung nakikita sa stories na everyone is really into it right now. And, you know, to be honest, I, I really enjoy it because it's different from basketball. Eh. Basketball, high intensity, mabilis. Mm. Tapos yung golf kasi parang relax-relax lang. But it's also yeah. detailed. It's it's harder than it seems. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a mental game. But yeah. I'm really enjoying it so far. So I'm glad na I was able to, you know, enjoy it while I'm still young kasi you can play golf till you're kahit matanda ka na. Oh, oh. 60. Kaya siya. Oh. Ako, I, I only tried like once nung bata pero hindi ko pa na-enjoy kasi siguro nga teenager pa lang yata ako. Yeah. Then. So I didn't really enjoy it that time. <laughs> Tapos, I just wanted to ask also yung next question ko is ano yung instance or moment na talagang sabi mo sa sarili mo that you will take basketball seriously? Was it during grade school, like nung bata ka pa talaga? Or was it more of nung high school na? Um, siguro high school. Pero yung real test ko talaga came in college. Kasi that was the year nga na nakot ako sa Team A. And actually at that time, I was actually considering not playing basketball. Na sabi ko, I talked to my parents at that time. I told them na mag na lang ako. I'll just finish my my studies in Ateneo and I'll just do something else because I felt like basketball wasn't for me anymore. Parang hindi na ako masaya. But the one thing that my parents told me na you know really brought me back to basketball was the fact na they were like, you know what? You're still young. You have what three, four, five more years. Just stick with it. Anyway, you're there already. Just stick with it and let's see para at the end of the day you know wala kang regrets how about sa high school stint mo since eh, mga 4 years kasi siguro naglaro sa Ateneo 
what are your most memorable moments and what are some lessons that you learned at a young age that you still use even now that you're already in the professional level? Um, one of the things, siyempre, is hard work. Kasi nung high school ako, actually yung mga batchmates ko, uh, sila yung nauna sa UAAP. I was just playing in the other leagues, mga Prada, yeah. Paya, doon lang uh, nag So I wasn't really, you know, one of the top top guys of my batch. But then, you know, eventually I I I was able to get my confidence from the other leagues that always I was playing in. Tapos yung ibang batchmates ko kasi, yan nauna sila sa akin sa UAAP tapos nag champion nang champion sila. But they weren't really getting, you know, a lot of playing time. So I feel like that's where yung yung advantage ko came in because I was I was playing in the lower division leagues but you know I was working on my game I was getting a lot of playing time and you know I was building my confidence also so I think that's one of the things that I learned also na hindi lang dahil nasa team A ka or nasa team B ka ibig sabihin parang okay ka na you still at the end of the day you still have to work on your game and it's really about the attitude that you have it eh. Kung gusto mo talaga yung ginagawa ko, ginagawa mo, you're gonna do whatever it takes to reach your goal. How many years were you in UAAP high school? Two years lang. I, I got ah, okay. in third year and fourth year. Okay. So yung pagiging uh, persevering mo, as you mentioned, that was kahit may adversity, parang you're still going through and tinutuloy-tuloy mo. Did you have some inspiration or did you have like your friends or family that always push you like your parents as you mentioned or were there any more? Yeah, for me it was just mainly my friends and my family, you know. They alam nila na basketball talaga yung first love ko and there's nothing that I wanted more than that. So, you know, they were always just there to support me and uplift me during times na I was down and even even until now. So, I'm very very grateful for them kasi If it wasn't for them, you know, I probably wouldn't be here right now. Yeah, I think important talaga yung upbringing, lalo na yung mga athletes now, like sa NBA na notice ko, like yung mga athletes, they go into the league early because they only do one and done in college. And normally, baka yung upbringing or yung, um, uh, yung mga parents nila, hindi, hindi, like they wasn't there to guide them the whole time. So maybe for, like for some people like you, when Aaron Black, when I interviewed him, he mentioned also na iba talaga yung support system tsaka yung upbringing. It really helps you when you mature and develop as a person. Yeah, actually that's, I think that's one of the main advantages that I had also compared to other people. Kasi, you know, not a lot of people are are as blessed as me and Aaron nga na kung ano yung gusto ko talaga, my family was always there to just, you know, support me and push me. Kasi, you know, yung ibang, yung iba parang hindi sila, parang their parents want them to do something else, eh, di ba? And yeah. Wala, parang napipilita na lang sila and it eventually just drives them, drives them away from what they really Yeah, it's like half-hearted lang yung paggagawa nila dahil nga hindi nila like love talaga yun. Yeah. Uh, so nung moving on to college naman, what was your recruitment story or were there other schools that you considered or Ateneo na talaga? There was no recruitment story. I wasn't the I wasn't a recruited player, you know, but uh, si actually si coach Norman Black was the one who kasi ang alam ko Every year from the juniors team, kumukuha sila ng at least one player na not necessarily ila line up sa team A, but you know, give them you know a shot chance to yeah. yeah, give them a chance to work out with the team, see if uh, but basila. So yun very thankful also kay Coach Norman Black, kasi I was his I was his last recruit technically, kasi the year after ng five feet in yung omalis ni si Coach Norman. Ah, nag PBA. Yeah, nag PBA siya. Okay. Pero binilin pa niya ako dun sa you know dun sa sa management na oh this is this is the guy na i want to get from the junior team so very very thankful for him for that i want to touch also yung um ateneo basketball program because i feel like you guys um from high school or grade school hanggang college tumutuloy kayo ng ateneo like even if tina-try i recruit ng ibang schools you're you stay committed and not all the schools are like that like si Jerry Pingoy nag FEU nag Ateneo, Nag-Adamson, and then 
konti lang din yung kumare from Zobel pumuntang La Salta. It's not really a normal thing. So what's this? What's the what does Ateneo do, or what's their secret? If whatever you can say, or what do you think in your opinion, and why the players really they're molded really well, like even the Nieto twins and Aaron, yeah, all those players. One thing is the education, talaga. As in, yun talaga yung pang you know pang attack nila dun sa mga recruit na parang you're not gonna get this kind of education anywhere else, mm. ganyan. And the other thing is, siguro yung culture, kasi you know, they really focus on, it's not just about winning for them. It's about developing players talaga. So, you know, as a player na who wasn't highly recruited, talagang gusto, dun ko gusto pumunta kasi I know na may mga pagkukulang pa ako as a player. And, you know, they really helped me work on my game. And it's the the sense of being a professional, even if, you know, technically you're still amateurs, di ba? But oh. you know, pro- being a professional isn't just a title. It's it's really how you carry yourself. Na parang you know, in practice, you you don't come to practice five minutes before, de ba? You're there na right before. You do your extra work. Magweights ka, magshooting ka. Yeah. Yung mga simpleng bagay lang na ganon. And how, of course, how you carry yourself on the court and more especially off the court. Because you know, you don't you don't just represent yourself. Sure, you represent Atene. You represent the alumni, everyone. So I think that was the the main thing that attracts uh, other students to go to Ateneo. How about from your perspective? Because, of course, from Coach Norman, there's a different way of coaching staff. Like before Coach Tab, there's Coach Sandy, pa, Coach Bo. Mm-hmm. So h- how do you think they still do the... I mean, the still players still stick to it? even Or how do the coaches also imparted to the players na tuloy-tuloy pa rin. Or yun na yun, yung education na yun and the off-the-court stuff. Yeah, I think it, it, it's more of that talaga. Tsaka yung, yung samahan din eh. Kasi iba din yung samahan sa, sa atin eh. Parang, you know, sometimes your teammates with one guy for just a year or two years. But, you know, habang buhay na yun eh, parang connections mo yun for the for the rest of your life. And, You know they really make sure na yung samahan and yung camaraderie is there. Like during team buildings, talagang we don't just have fun and do whatever we want. As in we have activities. You know, try to get to know each other. Try to work on yung yung chemistry namin of the court. Ganon. Because at the end of the day, it's still lalabas parin yung sa court, di ba? Yeah. How about before we go to the basketball part, like your playing years in the college division? How about the Ateneo education? Like, what course did you finish in Ateneo? Uh, interdisciplinary studies. Ako. And ah, okay. yung track was common management. Oh, okay. Kasi ako ABM din. So, in in your opinion, gano'n ka importante yung Ateneo education? And even after your playing years, parang how will you how will you be able to use it in your future endeavors? Kasi syempre, baka may business ka pa when you, when you retire or something like that. I think it's very important, but hindi siya, like, it's not really what, kung ano yung natututunan mo dun sa course mo. I think it's more of the things that you learn na, kunyari, um, when you have to balance your time kapag athlete ka. Or mm-hmm. actually, even if you're just a student. Eh, Siyempre, di ka lang naman nag-aaral, di ba? May mga orgs ka, may mga, yeah. you have other stuff to do. So, it's more of teaching you how to balance all of those things. Kasi, In life, syempre, marami kang pwedeng gawin, di ba? You don't just want to do one thing. So, I think that was one of the the best things that I learned from Ateneo. How to, you know, you learn how to manage your time and you're responsible and accountable for kung ano man yung nakakuha mong grades. Kasi kapag di ka mag-aral, di ka talaga papasay. You know, it's not it's uh, not that easy there at sa Ateneo. So, you know, you know, taking time off to, sometimes you have to miss practice kasi you have a big long test na hindi mo masyadong maintindihan yung topic so magpapa-tutor ka diba? uh-huh. I think it's really those things na talagang yung naturo sa akin ng Ateneo. Yeah, I think that's very important because I'll also listen to mga Ren Ren Retwalo ganun sa channel ni Mikey Reyes. He always said na parang important talaga yung education kasi now sa generation na to yung mga iba parang hindi na masyadong binibigyan ng importance yung education. It's more of like where they get minutes or where they get exposure, then that's where they go. And I feel that's not really the best move, in my opinion. 
Yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, it's dependent naman sa kanila yan. But yeah, you know, good for those who actually realize na there are there are a lot of more important things than just your career. Yeah, and I think malay mo, you never know talaga, de ba? Like may mga hurdles na biglang hindi ka tumagal sa basketball or something. Exactly. Di mo exactly. na alam, de ba? Kung saan ka mapupunta if you didn't uh, if you didn't even like finish two years in college or something. Yeah. Yeah. So nung Season 76 and season 77, you mentioned in numerous interviews na mahirap talaga dahil you barely got minutes. Pero nung time na yun, matured ka na ba na natatanggap mo na you don't get a lot of minutes and you still learn from your veterans? Or was it really hard for you just sitting on the bench and cheering every game? It was hard. It was really hard for me. Hindi pa ako, hindi pa ako mature nun. But... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, it was just tough because you know I was na sa team na ako and I was like I was so close to my dream already, but like it didn't feel right. Parang kulang pa. So yeah, it was very tough. But I believe na yung times yon is what really pushed me and motivated me to you know work harder and strive even harder and to be the a better player and a better person. So, nung season 76 and 77, um, ano yung lowest point mo? Yun na ba yung time na talagang you were considering to quit na from college basketball and just pursue a different track or job in the future? And what okay. made you change that mentality or dream? Actually, Are my first continue? season, masaya pa ako kasi, you know, it's rookie year, I made it to the team, ganyan. But I didn't expect na hindi ako magbibigyan ng chance. And, you know, my confidence was really low at that time. But at the same time, you know, I was very thankful kasi I was very close to my dream. But, uh, yun nga, I just didn't turn out the way I wanted to. We didn't even make, we make it to the finals. Or, I don't four. think we even made it. I don't even think we made it to the final four that yeah. year. Uh, But, you know, I was still grateful. And then, yung second year ko talaga, I think that's when you know, things kind of went crumbling down. Kasi, start pa lang ng training namin for season 77. Si, our coach at the time, si Coach Bo, he talked to like three of us. Tapos he was oh. telling us na parang he couldn't give us the chance, the opportunities that we deserve. So, basically, he was saying he, he was gonna cut us. So, yeah, it's a nice I remember it was three, three of us, me, Fran Asuncion, and Earl Murphy. After that, we were all just in the gym parang tulala lang kami parang uh-huh. totoo ba to is this really is this really happening parang we were so close to our dream tapos biglang just like that wala na and then yun team B ako and actually I was very happy at the time sa team B because I was getting the minutes that I wanted babad ka yeah. oh babad ako yeah. I was getting I was playing well also and I was uh-huh. getting you know parang bumabalik na parang yung happiness ko na playing the game and then yun actually After I was doing so well, and then after malapit na yung season nun eh, they called me back to Team A. And at that time, I wasn't really happy or excited about it kasi medyo alam ko na yung mangyayari na kahit na malayan na pa ko, I know I won't be given the, the, the minutes that I wanted, di ba? So yun, eventually na, nabalik ako sa Team A and... I think it was worse nga that year compared dun sa first year. Kasi first year, medyo excited pa. Rookie, di ba? Uh-huh. But then, yung second year na yun, parang medyo down na talaga ako. I already knew what was coming. And parang yun nga, lalo lang, parang lalo lang ako nabaon. And that was the time nga na I was telling my parents na, guys, parang ayaw ko na mag-basketball. And yun, like I mentioned earlier, they talked to me, they were like, you know what? You still have a few more years, just stick with it, keep working on your game. And we'll see, para wala kang regrets. And actually, I just want to mention na sobrang bilib ako sa dad ko nun kasi kinuusap niya si Coach Bo. But he wasn't, you know, he wasn't trying to fight Coach Bo. Uh, 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 he talked to him kasi he wanted to ask him ano yung nakikita ni Coach Bo na pagkukulang ko as a player. Okay. Yeah. So yun, you know, it, for me, it was like a very humble act. Na coming from my dad, di ba, na parang lumapit siya dun sa coach na nag-cut sa akin na hindi, na hindi ako ginagamit. Mm-hmm. So, yun, napabilib talaga ako sa kanya. Because, yun, he, he asked him, yung like, ano ba pagkukulang niya? And coach, sinabi naman ni coach mo na, ito, ito, ito yung pagkukulang niya. And 
And then when you got on your side, oh yeah, narinig mo na, sabi ni Coach Bo, ito pag kulang mo. That's what you have to work on. So nung sinabi nga niya yun, parang nas na-motivate ka na nung time na nag-team B ka na yun na to work on it talaga. And did you do it with a trainer or did you do it with your friends? How did you do it? Uh, actually, I did it sa Team B. Uh, si Coach Yuri and yung coach namin, yung strength and conditioning coach namin yung talagang tumulong sa akin. Si Coach, coach CJ, um, sila yung talagang, you know, they brought me they brought me back. Binalik nila yung confidence ko. And I just remember that time si Coach Yuri was always talking to me. Was, kasi si Coach Yuri, point guard din yan eh. Mm-hmm. So, he was, you know, just giving me tips, teaching me the basics of being a point guard, things I, I could use. And si Coach CJ naman, he really helped me with my, you know, building my body talagang para lumakas ako, bumilis ako, and all of that. So, nung Team B na yun, you were saying na masaya ka talaga. Pero, syempre, you still wanted to get into Team A. So, nung fourth, ah, sorry, to season 79, ba yun na hindi ka nasama? Or nasama 70, ka na? 78, hindi ako. Ah, 78, hindi ka na nasama. So, nung 79, when you got the call or the message that you were gonna get back into the lineup how was the feeling like and did you know na you were already re- rejuvenated na parang yung weaknesses na sinabi ni coach Bo na na address mo na yon and confident ka na, na you'll get more minutes season 79 comes in well i definitely believe na i was a way different player than i was during my first two years kasi talagang tinrabaho ko yon and i think it was all just yung timing of things lang eh. Kasi that year, that was the year na nawala si Coach Bo, dumating si Coach Tab. So mm-hmm. that means, you know, it was gonna be, nawala na rin sila Kiefer noon, sila Von. So technically, it was, you know, people my age na parang ako na dapat yung senior noon eh. So yun, sakto lang din kasi Coach Tab was, a, he, he's a foreigner and he wala talaga siyang kilala when he came here. So, It was a good chance for me and for everyone who wanted to make make the team that year to really, you know, prove ourselves. Because everyone just it's just like a fresh start for everyone. So, yung isang quote na sinabi ni Coach Tab, parang he was really not considering you to be part of the lineup yet, because he said you were too slow, too weak, can't play point guard, parang shooting guard ka pero you're too small. So, parang shooting lang talaga yung asset mo. Yeah or yung strength mo. So how did you take that initially? Were you like offended or did you really get it as a motivation na ulit na parang ako may kulang pa ako even if I worked on it the previous year? Definitely took it as motivation. I wasn't offended at all kasi if I mean if that's what he thinks, 'di ba? Then ano magagawa ko hindi naman ako pwedeng magtampo or magmukmuk, 'di ba? Like nothing. Wala akong makukuha if if I just, you know, pity myself. So yun actually yun nga during that year I was still fighting for the last slot. Uh, Parang dalawa pa kaming pinagpipilian nung isang ka, ka nagta-try out then. But you know uh, eventually I I was able to prove my worth and yeah he ako yung pinili niya sa team and uh, the rest is history. Yes. How about the season 79 nung from the onset pa babad ka na ba agad doon or mga second round pa or in the middle of the season kind of about about um i wasn't the starting guard yet i think a starter nun si Aaron. but then i think he i think he came down with an injury that year oh okay. so just for me it was just next man up diba it's yeah. obviously i didn't want Aaron to get injured but yeah agwa diba so it was just i just took it as an opportunity for me to prove myself and to step up. So yung season 79, since yun na nga, nakuha mo na yung breakthrough mo na it was your time to step up. Pero you went against Lasal na star-studded that had Jeron and Ben. And I think even your teammates or your fans kind of knew that you were really the underdog entering the finals. Pero obvious naman, like you almost still won game one. So nip and tuck affair yun hanggang dulo. Pero nung game 2, medyo double digits yata yung deficit. So, kamusta naman yung mentality nyo heading into the finals? Were you, how was it even if, you know, you were the underdog? Um, no pressure on us. Actually, during that time, we were just very excited, you know, to get a chance to actually be in the finals and get a chance to win a championship that no one even expected. But yun nga, Lasal was just 
too strong and we just didn't have any answers for them at that time. But um, actually, for me, it was achievement na rin yung year na yun. Eh. Kasi before the UAAP, whenever we would play Lasal sa mga summer leagues, tune-up games, bug-bug kami sa Lasal. As in, <laughs> not even to tambak 30 points, 40 points. I remember the fail oil. Yung, I watched live yung fail oil na 30 or 40. And then Coach Tab got so pissed na. <laughs> yeah, terrible, terrible yeah. talaga. Um, kasi they, I think he had a tough time also picking a point guard in that game kasi parang hindi yeah. niyo matawid yung ball or something yeah, because... hindi namin masagot yung mayhem nila at that time yeah so it was more motivation for you I guess entering season 80 and 81 mm-hmm. kasi syempre yun na yung dalawang taon na you wanna re- back-to-back rings and for you was it uh, since ang dami ng parang down downsides and parang yung motivations mo ang dami na did you really get tired of it now with losing and all these hardships that you encountered or you were really optimistic but then entering season 8? I think it was more of just the coming together of everything na yung, like everything we worked hard for. Si Coach, si Coach Tab kasi I'm sure he, he had a plan for sure kung paano namin tatalunin yung Lasal because he was always saying na Lasal was the, the team to beat and they set the standard here. So how do we get get to where they are. So talagang, we just, everyone just bought into the system and ako, the thing that I was most proud about that team was I think half or more than half came from, were homegrown players. So Ayun, these were the guys na yeah. I've known since we were in grade school pa. So, you know, we've, we've been through those battles and it was just a very exciting time for us to you know, win a championship at the next level, college, UAP, parang, who would have thought, di ba, na yung mga kasama mo since grade school magcha-champion kayo ng high school cha college. So, but yeah, I think it was just the coming together of uh, everyone's, uh, yung plan ni Coach Tab and everyone's hard work and everyone just bought into the system. Yeah, entering the final four, parang against FEU, it came down to the final shot pa tapos si Isaac go yung nag-shoot and then in OT you won. So parang even as a fan, parang you ka, sa tingin mo talaga they're out na but they don't and the ayaw nalang yeah. patalo. And then game game 2 yata yun na uh, you guys, did you guys win game 2? I know no, you guys we were up. Two, but you were up by like 20 points in the first quarter. Uh-oh. And, and then the, the way you were up and then you came back again and I was like, oh, is that you gonna win na now? That's game 3, I think LaSalle was up or parang close talaga the whole super game. Super close game. Yeah, super Very close. So, you know, entering the series naman, alam na yung 50-50 talaga yung battle and it was really um, a tight affair because wala na si Jeron eh. So, parang yun yung parang differentiating factor the previous year. Was that your mindset like that entering the final? Hindi uh, naman. But I think it was definitely like big for us na wala si Jeron kasi wala na talaga silang veteran. So, yeah, it was a good chance. I uh, Like, both teams were, they were, we were the top two teams at that time and it really could have gone either way. Even game three, like, could have gone either way if it wasn't for that, that Isaac go shot. <laughs> yeah. And then, nung, um, the series na yun, I think yung defense mo, grabe yung defense mo, either kay Karakot or kay Kib or kay Aljun or kay Richie, like, whoever you get switched on to, your defense was terrific the whole series. Was that really a point of emphasis for you entering that series? And grabe talaga yung physicality. Like, kayo ni Melesho, di ba? Like, nag, <laughs> nagkurbutan pa kayo or something. Yeah, I forgot yeah. the <laughs> replay. I just saw it before. Yeah. yeah How tough yeah. was it for the defensive aspect? Well, si Coach Tab naman talaga yung emphasis niya was defense talaga. Top defense. Like, if, if we don't score, they better not score. Mm-hmm. But for me, I took it I took it personally kasi ever since I was in grade school pa, ang lagi sinasabi sa akin, wala akong depensa. That's, that's what they always they would always say. And you know, medyo napipikon na ako kasi parang lahat na, parang kahit ako naniniwala na ako na wala ba talaga akong depensa. So, yeah, I was very happy na I was able to prove my defense during those years na you know, I'm not I'm not just someone na you can just blow by anytime. 
did you watch like YouTube videos or did you watch NBA players on how you do the defensive stances or schemes or your movements or tendencies? What was your strategy on your own? Um, wala naman, but si ang nagtuturo sa amin ng talaga si Coach Tab and si Coach Sandy. As in, they would teach us paano dapat yung movement mo on defense and every practice they would make us do like footwork footwork drills na ah, start pa lang ng practice pagod na pagod na kami kasi you know they they knew na defense was really gonna be our you know our, our emphasis for that year oh oh kasi kala ko nga in my opinion kasi parang mas like noon time noon mas sikat sila karakot and feeling ng mga tao mas talented sila compared sa guards niyo pero as a basketball fan, nakikita ko na hirap na hirap sila even if you guys nga yun, sinasabi mo, people label you as a weak defender. But if you really watch the game, you could see that you, Matt, Gian, it's really tough for the guards to actually score on them even if they're more talented supposedly offensively. And at the series, it was really tough for them. Especially in game three, I believe. So yeah. nung crucial parts of the game. Di ko lang alam kung each game, kung how many threes you made. Pero you were a clutch shooter and kung, kaila, kung kailan magra-run yung Lasal, for example, you're gonna make the big shot. So, sa shooting mo naman, how's your routine or how did you build up for moments like th- those na talagang 20,000 people are watching an Araneta? <laughs> well, ever since I was a kid, ang pinapractice ko lang talaga was yung, yun nga, yung shooting ko. Like, I wouldn't even do dribbling, dribbling drills or anything. Talagang <laughs> shooting lang talaga yung bread and butter ko. So, you know, I think it just, you know, all the, the hard work paid off lang din. Tsaka, the thing is, when you're playing in, in front of a huge crowd, kailangan mo talagang mag-focus. Like, you can't, you can't get lost in the moment. Um, and at, at that time, you know, everyone was just really locked in and we just really wanted to win that, that championship. So, yeah, I think it was just, you know, staying in the moment and being locked in talaga. Do you have any, like, rituals? Kunwari, like, nag-meditate ka ba pag time out or something? Or talagang malalang? You're really just focused talaga, locked in. So, parang you don't need to do any of those rituals na. Wala naman. Pero si, yung Nieto Twins kasi, ano sila eh, mapamahiin yung dalawang yun eh. So, um, yung ritual lang namin is, before every game, uh, kumakain kami ng, nagsa-Starbucks kami. Oh. <laughs> Yan lang. Tapos, kunyari, kunyari, panalo kami the previous game, di ba? Hmm. Yung seating arrangement namin sa sa bus, pati yung seating arrangement namin sa locker room, Same. parehas lagi. <laughs> Pwede yung mag-iba. Pag iniba mo, magagalit sila sa'yo. <laughs> Malay mo, you never know. It might work. Di ba? Uh, we did. Yeah, the diba? like champion. It might yeah. have worked. So, yung shooting routine mo naman, is it like more of madami kang shots? Or like, do you focus more on efficiency? Kasi kung mara, like I listen to podcasts, like kung mara si JJ Reddick, he always says na super precise that this spot kailangan 10, this spot off the dribble, 5 made. Kasi na, hindi siya alis ng gym kahit siya lang mag-isa. So, for you naman, meron ka bang mga drills or mga exercises na ginagawa in terms of shooting kasi in my opinion din talagang I think yung training mo na sinasabi mo you're super hard working with your shooting ever since bata ka it really paid off nung biggest moments so hindi ka na kinakabahan ng stuff like that yeah for me I don't think it was I didn't do any complex shooting drills it was just really more of the basic catch and shoot shot fake one dribble mga ganun lang and, but it was more of the the repetition yung muscle memory kumbaga kasi and yung timing kasi you know in basketball you always want to be in rhythm and once you get in a rhythm you want to stay in that rhythm so i think it was more of that talaga na talagang every day you know talagang magsu-shooting ako just so that hindi ako mawala sa rhythm yeah and i heard also in an interview that si Devin Booker daw nakita daw niya yung private workout isang trainer na local and he said Sobrang simple lang yung ginagawa ni Booker eh. Pero repetitive kasi nga muscle memory. Tsaka kung saan-saan na different spots. Kasi parang they said na pag game, you can't choose which spot you're gonna yeah. shoot in. So yung trainer niya, ginugulo yung routine niya. Like kung anong spots. Pero effective. Like Booker is one of the best shooters in the NBA. Yeah, I agree with that. He's one of my idols also sa NBA. Oh, yeah. Tapos nung 
in season 80, so nag-champion na nga kayo na ang saya mo na most of your teammates were from high school and grade school. Ano yung way or uh, method na ginawa ni Coach Tab entering season 81? Kasi parang nung season 81, sobrang motivated pa rin kayo and it's inspired you. I think you were 12-2 and two in the elimination round and parang ang dali-dali lang, tuloy-tuloy lang and then yung final, tinambakan nyo lang yung UP. So, yung, kamusta naman yung off-season yun noon? Kamusta yung entering, malapit na yung season? Meron ba siyang ginawa na kept you motivated kahit just won a championship? Uh, yeah, syempre, he would always tell us uh, na, you know, winning a championship is is easy, but it's defending, uh, going back-to-back is even harder. You know, repeating a title is even harder. So, I think our training that year, that back-to-back year, was the hardest out of all the the past years kasi you know he didn't he really didn't want us to be relaxed ayun yung kumpiyansa kami talagang he was like the team that won last year that forget it man that this year is a different team we lost some guys and some guys some most of you guys are are still here but that was a different team so forget about that and focus on this one How about naman yung sinasabi mo kasi like parang pong nagsasalita si Coach Tab, parang lahat kayo napapakinig kagad and not all coaches have the authority or power to actually impart their knowledge or impart their their thoughts and then yung 100% of the team mapapakinig. So ano yung sa tingin mong secret on why your whole team is always listening to him? I think one thing is we, like we know Coach Tab's resume. Like he's he's a proven coach, interna- not just you know he's a proven coach internationally. The main things, na talagang when he speaks, you ha- you have to listen because you might miss out on something. Uh-huh. And si Coach Tab, kasi biglang ng tatanong ng questions yan eh. So kapag di ka na ikinig, <laughs> kasi tinanong ka ng question, yari ka, de ba? Oh, uh, parang sa school. Di ako masasagot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, But another thing is he coached a very articulate. I mean, yeah, he's 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 a foreigner, so it's on yung words niya. Papa believe na lang pa ang wala. Our thesis defense. But you know, he coached a. never heard this before na talagang you have to fake your defender first before you come off the screen. Usually, sinasabi lang ng mga coaches, basta mag-rub off ka lang, basta mag-shoulder to shoulder kayo, okay na. So, I think it was that also, yung yung attention t- to detail ni Coach Tab, na talagang you have to listen because if you miss out on something, it could be, you know, it could be the end. Hindi naman end of but like, it could uh, make or break make the the play or whatever. Uh, Maybe the game or even the season, yeah. the word I gave. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, nung season 81, um, parang you got better pa because you got Ange. I think Ange wasn't in season 80, yeah. right? Yeah, Ange 81 was in, siya, 81 siya. Yeah, 81 siya pumasok. That was one of our huge advantages also. <laughs> yeah. So, nung season 81, yung, parang napadali ba yung buhay niyo when he got there? And yeah, compared to season 80. Well, mas confident kami to pressure up on the the opposing teams. I think that year we changed the defensive philosophy namin in terms of our rotations. Because yun nga we had Anj Kwame who was seven feet tall, so that was a really huge advantage for us. And the thing about Anj also is he's very he's very young, and if you actually talk to Anj, para parin siyang bata. Yeah. I see But the thing about him is he's, ano, he's uh, very willing to learn and just a really nice kid. How about the whole journey of the season for season 81? Meron bang mga major obstacles na dadaanan kayo pero ano yung aspect that made you overcome it or ano yung moment or did someone talk to you guys that made you overcome it? Kasi I don't know if you had obstacles ba nung season na yun. Well, during that year, people were expecting us to sweep, but oh. then we lost the first game right first away. Game. So we were like, "Okay, there goes the <laughs> our chances of sweeping." Uh-huh. So na walang agad yung pressure na yon. But I think our mentality during that 
year was, you know, alam naman namin na we were the favorites, but our mentality was, you know, to take take it one game at a time. Like you can't look too far ahead and you can't stay in the past. So it was just every time one game at a time. So kung ang kalaban mo is UE Adamson tas Lasal, when you're gonna play UE, you can't be thinking about Lasal already. Like you have to get the job done first. So I think that was our that was our mentality during that year. Naalala ko nung last year, you were there na sa Ateneo. I think afternoon game or something. And then UE nga yung kalaban. And then easy, easy lang yata yung Ateneo nung first half. Ang coach Tabos the one doing the, ano yun yung warm-up bago mag second half uh, or warm-up ng game. Kasi I'm pretty sure he was so pissed. And, kasi nga, siguro relax sila na UE yung kalaban. And then, yeah. nung second half, nag-all out. And they still won by 20 to 30 yata. So, kada talaga yung way of the, motivating the, the, the thing about coach tap is kasi kahit na lamang ka na ng 20 kahit kung di pa tapos yung game you keep playing and you keep playing the right way kasi tendency talaga mangyari siya up by 20 you relax eh, di ba and coach tap always says this he hates big leads kasi yun nga talaga ang <laughs> tendency na pag malaki na yung lamang okay relax na tayo wala tapos na to so yeah no surprise na coach tap was getting mad at them during that game because that's really one of the things he he, he emphasizes na you play 40 minutes start to finish no matter what the score is and you play the right way. So nung finals nga, nung, lalo na nung game to big lead talaga yun as in 40 yata ah, yung manas nyo or 30 against UP. So ano yung game plan nyo naman nun? Kasi nung final four parang UP was so strong against Adamson and even if People thought Adamson were gonna, was gonna win. They won two in a row, and one was on a tear. And also, Desid, Paul Desiderio and Bright Aquetti. So, what was your game plan? Was it more of like make them score on their own and then guard everyone else, or did you really have a good game plan on how to defend the big three? I think our game plan was to just play team defense, because the offense nila. Yun nga, nakarely sa in in sa individual abilities nila. It wasn't really, you know, move the ball, set mm-hmm. screens for each other, get this guy open. So I think sobrang kontrapelo lang din kami sa kanila. Yeah, I Kasi agree. if I mean one player or two players can't beat the five guys on the floor, diba? Yeah. So if they if they wanted to beat us, I feel like they they should have done something else. So That was as, as as that was your final year in Ateneo. What do you think your legacy is in Ateneo, especially since you were there since grade school, playing basketball na, and then you played college. So I don't know in total how many years did you play? Ano yung legacy na gusto mong maiwan or na iiwan mo ngayon sa Ateneo? Well, I want them to remember me as a winner, of course, a champion, and someone who just never gave up. Na even though marami kang pinagdaanan na challenges and obstacles, you still found a way to, you know, to pull through. And not just, it's not just in basketball, it's even in life. Eh. Kasi, di ba, lahat naman tayo may mga pinagdadaanan. And, you know, ganun lang talaga ang buhay. And you just have to, you just have to get through it sometimes. How about the future of Lady, anong Blue Lady Eagles? Sorry, Blue Eagles, because they were the champions sila nung season 82 alit, and parang Dwight Ramos is coming in supposedly. So kung mare walang pandemic, he already played and maglalaro pa siya ulit. What's your take on the Blue Eagles for the next, I don't know, five years maybe? Because they've been winning already so much, and do you think they can keep it up? And sana naman hindi, para maka-champion naman Lasal, habang <laughs> nasa Lasal pa ako. The joke lang. <laughs> well, I, I believe they're in good hands. You know, Coach Tab is still there. The entire coaching staff is still there. And yung, yung mga rookies namin nung, nung when we were the seniors, sila na yung veterans ngayon. So, I believe they're in good hands. And I honestly hope they can beat the five feet and make it a six feet. <laughs> you think kaya naman siguro kasi Dwight, how, I don't know, Dwight and Eli Ramos, the brother both coming in yeah. and then Dwight, Dave, Andre still there, SJ still there, lakas pa rin nila. So, hopefully, let's see, sayang nga yung pandemic is, the pan, this pandemic is, you know, stopping the UAP from pushing through. Yeah. 
I think it's really going to be difficult, especially Lasal. Like, if I think about it now, I don't know who's going to guard Dwight in Lasal. I mean, with their current lineup. I, know, I watched Dwight in Bahrain, the Bahrain window. Parang Thailand had no <laughs> chance to defend him. And yeah. what more in Lasal? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. So, nung going into the next year, you could have applied for the PBA draft, right? But you decided not to yet. Yeah. Well, ako kasi at that time, I still wanted to work on my game dun sa other leagues, sa D-League, tsaka sa MPBL. And I felt like it was a good chance for me to do that under Coach Eric Altamirano. Um, no regrets man, but thinking about it now, if 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 I knew na magkakaroon ng pandemic, I probably would have entered the draft already. <laughs> Parang doon na ako. Uh, so you really, it re- you really didn't consider it or na-consider mo, pero you felt like you wouldn't put a good impression yet or dun sa mga yeah. teams. Parang ganun. I was considering it, but then I talked to my parents and my family about it. And me personally, I felt like I wasn't ready yet, so I, you know, I, I didn't mind taking a year off just to continue working on my game and being a better player. Were there specific aspects of your game that you you feel you it really developed over the course of a year before you applied this year? Yeah, definitely. Uh, being not just in you know, a shooter, but using the ball screens, um, shooting off the dribble, stuff like that, getting my teammates involved. Yun, yeah, trying to be more of an all-around player and a point guard and not just a, a shooter. So, long MBPL and D-League stints, um, what do you think you learned from both of it, like separately or more of the same lang naman yung natutunan mo? Because I think sa MBPL, a lot of players, dun, uh, I don't know, like League and Labas or... Yeah. They played in the PBA, pero hindi na sign or sa D League then same same thing like PBA players been before. So ano yung specific aspects or lessons na natutunan mo from them over the course of a year? I think it was more of just being uh, getting used to playing against older guys, because in the PBA you know th- those guys are the best of the best and they're a lot older than I am. So. I guess I just wanted to see how I could do against older, you know, tougher and bigger guys. Because the mga kalaban ko dun, mga may family na, di ba? Uh-huh. So I think it was just getting myself used to playing against older guys. Talaga. Meron ka bang mga memorable moments there, or do you have memorable teammates that you became close to? Um, si ano si Santi. Santillan. From La Salle. Yeah, he was my teammate sa D-League, pati sa MPBL. Tapos naging teammate ko rin si Aaron Black sa MPBL. So, yeah, definitely uh, fun, fun times. But then yung MBPL, did you guys get to play a lot of games? Because there was, there was a pandemic, so hindi na tuloy? Or you got to uh, play? We got to play the, the previous season. We finished that one. Tapos yung next year ko dapat, which was this year, parang hindi nga siya natuloy because of the pandemic. But I think we played, how we played like 20 plus games. Madami din. Ah, uh, madami. Okay. Yeah. Kasi I thought na parang na, naputos dahil nga parang you didn't have the time anymore. Or, kasi our playoffs na rin ba? Yeah. Nung... We made it to the playoffs kaso hindi nga kami umabot dun sa sa division finals which is I think is being played right now yeah uh, tinutuloy nila na how about nung quarantine nga it was so long and then biglang nagkaroon ng three on three and then you were inserted to one of the teams how was it how was the process were you like really considering it na talagang fight na anong, basta may basketball you were gonna play three on three because it's a whole different yeah. game I was very relieved actually but before that naglaro na ako sa 3x3 before oh, I played okay. for MPBL na kapag 3x3 na ako. So, actually, during at that time, during that time, I was very, very happy kasi nga, ang tagal nang walang basketball. I, I, I felt like I was, I mean, I was incomplete. <laughs> Parang ganun yung na-feel ko eh. And, so yeah, I'm just happy na I was able to get back to playing basketball even if it was just 3x3. 
ano naman yung aspects ng 3on3 3x3 game na ma-apply mo sa 5on5 na from a fan's perspective baka you don't really notice it much because you're just watching basketball and it looks like the same thing but if you're a player it's far from the same thing well one thing is 3x3 is very different from 5on5 yeah uh, the, yung physicality pa lang i think they really just let you hit each other there as in they just let you play mm-hmm. and actually if you think about nakapagod mas parang mas nakapagod pa ata just sa 5 on 5 because you're playing 10 minutes tuloy-tuloy non-stop and every day kasi you play at least two games and a maximum of five games if you get to the the yeah. finals so i think yeah that in physicality talaga ng Utrex di grabe yeah, I've, I've listened to interviews that si Troy Reich nga daw parang na-challenge siya na mag-defend. Kasi yeah. at 5 on 5 parang if you don't play defense, medyo hindi mahahalata. Or sa 3, yeah. 3 x 3 pag hindi ka nag-defend, may exposed ka sa hub. Ba? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hindi mo pwede tago yung weaknesses mo sa 3 x 3 Oh, How about the battles naman? Like, one of the most memorable ones was Jai Reyes and you. Kasi pareho kayong, ano, at 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 yung guards na maliliit that are really tough and gritty defenders and also great shooters and stabilizers as point guards. So how was the battle naman with him? Because I read na talagang idol mo siya, pero nung naglaban kayo, talagang bug- bugbugan talaga kayo. Yeah. Well, that, that was fun naman. And it was, I think that's the first time I ever played against... Well, he was my teammate dun sa Bataan, but to really play against him talaga, that was my first time. And and actually, I enjoyed every moment of it. Uh, I, I wouldn't have had it any other way. I wouldn't. Di ko magustuhan ko nyaare pinagbigyan lang ako ni Jai. You know, <laughs> we're both yun nga. You said we're we're both tough and we're both gritty. And at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's competition. Talagang may sa three extreme may pinaglalabanan pa kayo ng cash price nuna, de ba? So mahal nga. Sure, ay mo rin maghuhala. Yeah, and so yeah, it was definitely fun. Okay, so as we move on to the last few questions for our interview, and thank you so much again for coming into the show. These are like the normal. These are like a few questions that I normally ask everyone, talaga, in the interview. Pag nago wind down na. So one of it is, I, I know you watch a lot of NBA, and you said that Devin Booker was one of your idols. And nung nasa bubble sila, they were very vocal with um black lives matter because those are like the social issues in their country but here naman locally we have different also social issues and in my opinion nam lang naman uh, athletes can um become more vocal or become more articulate with their opinions kasi uh, yung platform nila it's really high and their followers are a lot so pag sina- may sinabi sila like kunwari you're, you're knowledgeable about a certain issue and then you tweet about it it might be a way for you to educate your fans or your followers and you never know it might change their mind for like the elections or mm-hmm. um, for them to be more vocal also tapos, you know you never know it might cause a ripple effect for the positive way here in the philippines so for you naman how is it how what's your opinion on athletes being vocal and being yeah articulate and amplify their voices with all these issues that are surrounding the philippines I think it's very good na some athletes are very vocal and to be honest ako kasi personally I'm not really wala akong masyadong alam sa mga ganyang bagay ng politics and it's kind of ironic cuz I come from a political family but yeah I've just never I was just never really I just never really got into it but you know definitely if you have a platform I believe na you should you know speak up and Tell them, you know, what you really think. Because you nga sabi mo, you have a platform, and people will really listen to you if you, if you speak your mind. So, yung sa twenty twenty two elections, do you think athletes, if not like you naman, like others na mas educated or mas informed sa subject na to, do you think they can really help educate the voters? Because like kung sa NBA, de ba yung mga ibang players nga nila di daw nagvote ever, parang first time lang nila magvote. Yeah. in this recent November elections, like people like Chris Paul and LeBron, they were able to educate certain people with their more than a vote and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. I feel like, you know, athletes who have a platform can, uh, you know, make, have an effect 
on educating you know people who don't really know as much and by all means i really hope that they do kasi you know really in a tough situation right now and hopefully things turn out better in in 2022 <laughs> hopefully yeah pero i don't know kung helen pa magiging normal talaga matagal pa <laughs> yeah How about for your best Ateneo memory that's not basketball or UAAP related? Best memory? For me, siguro yung ano, just every day in the classroom. Kasi all boys, eh, di ba? Ngayon sa Ateneo, ano na eh, co-ed na eh. Uh-huh. So it's different. So just all all those times, parang minsan talagang nakakamiss kasi lahat ng, you know, yung mga kulitan, mm-hmm yung mga, mga kalokohan na ginagawa niyo doon. Uh, it's just, it's very nice to look back on. Tapos, ang dami kasi namin eh. Sa amin, per batch, we're like, we're like 500 ata. So, sobrang saya. Tapos, you guys see each other every day. Magkasama kayo, you know, it for like an entire year. So, sobrang saya yung mga class night. Ganun. Mm, yeah. Then, nakakamiss. <laughs> Yeah, ganun din nung sa Southridge. Pero kami were relatively smaller. We're only like 100 or even less in a batch. Kasi small school lang. So yung next question ko is, I think it's from, I think, I'm not sure if you know this, pero baka you know, it's from All The Smoke Podcast. They asked it to their guests then sa may dulo ng interview nila. They asked them if there if you would have a formal dinner with like steak and wine and like that, and stuff like that. Uh, ganong meal. Um, who would you want there? You can choose any five individuals that are dead or alive. <laughs> Ooh. For me, anyone? Anyone? Yeah, kahit, kahit like Martin Luther King or Jose Rizal. <laughs> Pwede yun. Yeah, any. Um, one would probably be, syempre idol ko muna, si Steph Curry. Okay, yeah. I want to be with him. Tapos, five ba? Oh, five. Okay, Steph Curry. Um, sino pa ba? Si... Hey, this is hard, ah. <laughs> Steph Curry. Ano ba mga... <laughs> mga historians na so... Yeah. Dito. Or um... celebrities. <laughs> musicians I artists. think one would be si ano yun nga si si Jose Rizal okay yun kasi like I want to know like I want to ask him a bunch of stuff like what was it <laughs> what was it like during that time <laughs> yeah um celebrity celebrity crush ko si ano Kate Beckinsale <laughs> Kate Beckinsale uh and then two more um Another would probably be yun si um, Barack Obama. Ayun. I have heard Barack people say Obama. that from my previous Barack guest Obama. also. Yeah. Then me kasi personally, I, I really like I really like black people. As in, sometimes I wish I was black. <laughs> <laughs> Para si Duncan Robinson. Parang, and si JJ Reddick. Yeah, yeah. They say like they're like black. When they yeah, play yeah. in the game. <laughs> yeah. And then, my last would be... Siguro si ano? Nino Aquino. Mm, pwede, yeah. Dami mo rin matututunan in yeah. a span of two to three hours. Yeah. So... Hirap uh, ng question na yun, ha? <laughs> Oo, oh, okay. Yung mga ibang guests din, matagal din dun eh. Kasi parang cool cool lang sa five daw par they want yeah. more <laughs> so at the end this is one of the questions that i asked my previous guests and as i mentioned earlier i had former atenians like justin chua aaron black danny ravena on my episode pero since i mentioned also na i don't really have friends or connections in the with athletes and i just message like anyone talaga and hope they reply sino yung mabibigay mong suggestions that i should Uh, guest on the podcast or the show in the pre- next episodes, in the future episodes. Maybe people that can give a good story as well like yours. And any sport pala, kasi hindi lang naman basketball yung tinatakal ko dito sa locally. 
Um, another. Hmm. Sino ba? For me, I think a good next guest would be. Si Tyler Tio. Ah, okay, yeah. I, I, I haven't tried asking him. But uh, yeah, his, he was from Savior also. So yeah. it's really a good story. Very He's smart, a very, very nice dude also. Yeah. But like you could get, get a lot of things from him too. Do you have any other or wala ka na masyado maisip na suggest? Mm. For me, isa pa, pwede siguro si ano, si Ike. Chibu, well, kasi, okay. Yeah, because it would be nice to you know understand like where he came from, ganyan, what it was like when he got here. Because wala siyang family dito, like he literally left his family to play basketball here. So I think EK would be a good one also. If After you want, like I can reach out to him. Oh okay, I I can ask you na lang. I'll message you na lang. Um, yeah. what do you call this? Um, when he left, when it was his last year, he just left, na or did he stay no, here? No, he's he's still here. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I actually get to talk to him sometimes. Kinakamusta ko siya kasi nga pandemic, ganyan. So, I just want to know how he's doing. Ah, okay. So, how does he live alone? Ganun? Yeah, he's by himself. I think he's with the other the other imports also. Nagkakasama sila minsan. Mm, okay. So, yun, thank you again, Anton, for taking time. Even if you're very busy and you just got drafted yesterday <laughs> or recording this on one day, I'll post it on Wednesday. Pero... You just got drafted around what 24 hours ago, and yeah. it took some time to go and get into my podcast and join me here. And I really appreciate it, and I learned a lot from your story. Because even if you know, you're not like a superstar like the Story D. Ravenas or the Matt Nietos, you really have a story that's maganda pakinggan for a podcast like this. And na parang kwentuhan lang talaga hindi like formal interview. So thank you again. And do you have any final message? Uh, wala naman, but just, you know, thanks for having me and that was that was fun. Medyo matagal kwentuhan natin pero masaya naman. Thanks oh, for having me, bro. Yeah. I really like yung mga ganitong conversations kasi yeah, kwentuhan lang and then you got to post it and people learn a lot about it. Mm-hmm. Learn, learn a lot about you. Yeah. So for before you go, is it okay if I ask for like a picture? I'll screenshot. Yeah, sure, bro. It. Okay. Okay, one, two, three. So yeah, thank you so much hey. again, Anton. Solid, bro. Thank you, thank coming you. Coming to the show, and I'll I'll send you the link when I post it. And yeah, yes, yeah. okay. Appreciate thank it, you. bro. Ingat, ingat. Bye.